Hello there, my name is Jerome and with my 8 years of experience in flexibility training I made this online free comprehensive flexibility course that you can follow. You can use the menu to skip certain parts of the video or you can just find whatever you want to watch. But I do recommend you to check out the introduction including the physiology of flexibility as well as the proper stretching technique. Let's get started. First of all, I'll give you a short introduction of flexibility training as well as the physiology of flexibility. Also, I will talk about the correct stretching technique which is very important for beginners but also for those who are more advanced and still don't make enough progress. Then I'll talk about the warm-up, training basics, basics including how long you have to hold a stretch as well as how many sets you should do and so on. Also, frequently asked questions and myths about flexibility training, weight training, bodybuilding and flexibility, the combination between those variations and also sports and flexibility, some key points that you have to keep in mind. Then I will go on to side split and front split training, giving you some exact tips that will help you to get further into your progress as well as going into some of the most basic types of flexibility including static stretching, dynamic and ballistic stretching, isometric, isometric PNF stretching and also myofascial release and I'll end this video with showing you an exercise guide so a bunch of exercises for each muscle group that you can do in order to become as flexible as you can. Flexibility is basically the range of motion of your body or of your muscles so if you are able to kick up your leg very high that means that you have a great range of motion and also that your flexibility level is probably pretty high. Now this course can be followed whether you are a weightlifter, bodybuilder, martial artist or just the average Joe looking for a show off skill such as a side split. If you don't understand certain parts of this video then check out my website where I have written down everything. Let's get straight into the physiology of flexibility. Your body is capable of adjusting itself to the demands that are put upon it. So for example if you want to run a marathon then with proper training and some time of course you will probably be able to run a marathon. And the same goes for flexibility training. There are two factors that play a crucial role, a crucial role in getting flexible, which are the muscle spindles and the Golgi tendon organs. The muscle spindles send signals to your brain that there is tension on your muscles. Now, if this tension gets too high, then your muscle spindles will say that you should stop, that it hurts. However, if the tension is mild, then your Golgi tendon body organs, so GTOs, can override these muscle spindles and can say to your muscles that they should relax and that will allow you to stretch a little bit further. However, if you stretch too far then the GTOs cannot overrule the muscle spindles and therefore you won't become more flexible. Let's put this theory into practice by showing you a side split. Now let's say that this is your maximum range of motion and with this you're feeling the tension in your muscles. Now it's a bit too far for me for example, then if I feel that the tension is too high I should go up a little bit further until the tension is okay, until it's manageable. Now. This is the time where it should take 20 to 30 seconds before the Golgi tendon organs are starting to kick in and let your muscles relax more and then you will be able to go down a little bit further. So your body basically or your brain basically remembers that this is your new maximum range of motion, this is exaggerated but still, and then it will help you to get down further the next training that you do. So a big mistake is to go down too far, too fast and that will give you pain or have high tension which your body cannot overrule and therefore you won't gain any flexibility, in fact you will become more inflexible. Even though you can do certain types of flexibility training without a warm up, I do recommend you to warm up before doing flexibility training. Especially if you are a beginner, the main reason is to avoid injury as well as get a chance to get a bigger range of motion because when you are warmed up it's easier for you to get into certain positions and also to improve your flexibility overall. It also protects your joints in that there is a certain fluid called synovial 
fluid which is in between your joints so in between the two bones that are connected together with the joint and when you are cold this joint or this joint fluid is not very fluid at all at all it's rough and it doesn't allow your muscles and your bones to move properly so if you do a warm-up then these fluids become more fluid and therefore it helps your body or your muscles and your bones to move more properly like I said stretching without a warm-up is a very bad idea if you are a beginner and that is because beginners most of the time don't really have an understanding of their capabilities and limitations of flexibility training so they don't feel when they are stretching properly and when they don't however if you are more advanced then you can start with some lighter stretches and then build your way up to the more intense and more advanced stretches without actually doing a thorough warm-up so what does the warm-up that you do for a flexibility training look like it's pretty basic actually if you are doing your lower body so if you're doing lower body stretches then you would do just fine with rope skipping or jogging jogging on your place running all those things for 5 to 15 minutes depending on what how long it takes you to warm up or to feel confident that you can properly and safely stretch now you don't have to break a sweat especially not if you're living in a cold climate your muscles might be warm before you start sweating so don't stress getting all sweaty before you can do a proper a proper stretching routine because it simply is not that important to start sweating if you're stretching as part of your sports or workout routine then please remember that static stretching so relaxed stretching which I talk about more later is not a good idea if you want to warm up for that sport so if you're doing martial arts then don't use static stretching as part of your warm-up for martial arts training because it will relax your body and a relaxed body is not able to deliver the maximum amount of force so basically what you want if you are doing a warm-up for a sport is for example dynamic stretching like leg swinging stuff like that and that will help you to get your blood flowing as well as become more flexible and increase your range of motion without having a relaxed body by now you should have a basic understanding of how flexibility works and how to use a proper stretching technique now let's get into how many sets and reps that you have to do for flexibility training now like i said it takes about 20 to 30 seconds for your body to ease into tension so to decrease the tension of a muscle and therefore increase your range of motion now these 20 seconds can count as reps of course you don't really talk about reps if you're doing flexibility training it's rather seconds that you hold a stretch however it's easier for most people to understand that reps basically is the same as seconds in this case now 20 seconds it can be one set 20 to 30 seconds can be one set and if it says three sets of 20 seconds that means obviously that you are going to do three sets of 20 seconds holding an exercise in between that there will be rest now in flexibility training you don't need to get back from an intense workout because obviously stretching is not that intense so instead of taking a long break of one minute to let your muscles recover it only takes about three three to ten seconds for your muscles to get a little bit relaxed again and that's more than enough in between two sets and it also helps you to keep the workout time that you have spent shorter than if you would have to rest one minute in between let's give you an example of this four sets of 30 seconds and this means that you're doing one set of 30 seconds holding an exercise until the tension fade away you can count but if you're more advanced then you might just do it by feeling after those 30 seconds you will get out of the position and get a short amount of rest which is three to ten seconds you can just shake your arms or your legs depending on what you're stretching and then go on to the same exercise for another set try to get down deeper into the stretch this time until you feel tension again and let this tension let that tension fade away once again repeat for two more times and that is your entire workout for that particular muscle i recommend one stretch per muscle group is more than enough 
However, you might do some inner thigh stretches and after that want to practice your side split. Obviously that's possible, but most of the time one stretch for each muscle will do just fine. You can also try to do shorter sets if you're out of time, so if you don't have a lot of time, don't want to spend a lot of time on flexibility training. In that case, 10 seconds might do for some people. I used to stretch for 3 sets of 10 seconds per leg if I did ex stretching exercises and that helped me to get into the side split in about 5-6 to six months. Regarding lower body stretching, there is a particular order that you should try to manage, which is you will start with a quadricep stretch, then do hamstring stretches, hip stretches, inner thighs, and then the lower part of your legs, so your calves, as well as your shins should be done as well. And obviously the glutes are falling in between that, I forgot about that, you should do them after your hips. So that is the order in which I recommend you to do your stretching of the lower body because it will help you to do the other stretches more easily. And regarding upper body training, I recommend you to do it the same as you would train for flexibility for fitness. So if you are training your muscles to build stronger muscles, then I recommend you to start with the bigger ones and work your way down to the smallest ones and the same goes for flexibility training. Before getting into the more applicable parts of this flexibility course, I wanted to talk about some of the most common myths as well as frequently asked questions for you guys. So first of all, let's start with can men become flexible? Yes, they can. I am a guy, as you may have noticed, and I am pretty flexible as well. That means that guys can indeed become flexible. However, it is more difficult for them than it is for women. So keep that in mind. Uh, if you see a girl bending in all kinds of directions and you cannot do that, obviously it will take some more training than it took for her. Most of the time anyways. Also, what does age have to do with how flexible you can become? Basically, age is important in this case because the younger you are, the easier it is for you to become flexible. However, that, this doesn't mean that if you are a 60 year old guy or woman that you cannot become flexible anymore. It does just take some more time and better preparations. You should pay more attention to your warm up and you should listen more to your body and don't train too hard and too often. Can I still become flexible even though I've been weight training for years and I'm very much or yes you can the size of your muscles does not matter directly how flexible you are it's rather if you are training specifically for your flexibility so big weightlifters might not have trained their flexibility properly although weightlifters probably have but bodybuilders for example haven't and in that case it may look like they are not able to become flexible because their muscles are so big but that's really nonsense it's it really doesn't matter if you are muscular or not if you want to become more flexible it's, in fact it is easier for you to become flexible if you are also strong because your muscles need to be strong enough to also be able to get into certain positions that are required to become flexible. How long does it take me to become flexible and to learn the splits? This is one of the most frequently asked questions on my channel and also the most difficult question for me to answer. Probably even more difficult for me to answer than how long it takes you to get six pack abs. The reason for this is that everyone is different and also it depends on many factors such as genetics, your age, your gender, also your level of flexibility when you started and as well as your physical or your activity level in general. If you sit down on a chair behind the, at the office then you obviously are going to need more time to become flexible than someone who has been active and playing sports all their lives especially if they have done martial arts or gymnastics when they were young, younger or at this moment. So, to give you an example, it took me about six months to learn the side split and another four months or so to learn the front split after that. And I did this by actually not training that often. I only trained after a running routine and then I did flexibility training for five, sometimes ten minutes and doing three sets of ten seconds holding an exercise. So that's not really beneficial or at least that's not the perfect way of training and it most likely can go faster. However, 
I would definitely say that you will need six months to up to a year if you are not really flexible to start with and I was Aver above average flexible when I started doing flexibility training, being an, active, being an active child and also climbing and stuff and doing some crazy other skills that I learned when I was younger. How often can you do flexibility training? This depends again on many factors. First of all, how much time that you have to train your flexibility obviously, at what time of the day that you can stretch as well as what kind of stretching that you're doing. So there are different types of stretching techniques and for example a relaxed stretching technique or aesthetic stretching technique can be done daily. It's kind of like yoga which you can do daily unless you are doing very intense and advanced exercises. If you are doing however aesthetic or, or isometric stretching or PNF stretching which I talk about later then I do not recommend you to do it daily because it's very intense and it can cause injuries if you do it too often. Old school martial artists and gymnast coaches may think this is the best option. So do you need to be forced into a split or into advanced stretch stretching exercises? No, just, just don't. I don't understand why these stupid coaches even do coaching because why on earth would you push a kid into a side split or a front split? It's dangerous, it can damage them for life. In fact, if you are forcing into flexibility exercises, so if you are being forced into a split until it hurts, then you can actually damage your muscles and they will be stretched out too much and they won't be able to keep your joints together properly at a older age. So please, please do not force yourself into splits or any kind of other stretching exercises and don't listen to any coach that says that you have to do it and that you have to feel pain in order to become flexible. It really does not. It's very contra, counter predict, product, counterproductive if you do. So pain is never a good thing if you are doing stretching. The best way to become flexible is to hold a certain position for a long amount of time. This is a myth. It is not the best idea to do this. First of all, if you are trying to do a split and you go down as far as you can, let's say until this angle and you cannot go any further, then some people say that you have to be in this position for five minutes and in those five minutes the tension should fade away but most of the pe people just go down as far as they can and then they don't feel the tension fade away. Not even in five or ten minutes. It should be fading away in 20 to 30 minutes. So in that case they have to decrease the angle in which they are stretching. This goes for with every exercise but in this case I explain the side split. And then in this position the tension should fade away in those 20 to 30 seconds. Then they can go down a little bit further into a deeper stretch and getting a new tension level. Once this tension fades away they can go down a little bit further again. So that's the best technique and not forcing yourself into a certain position for a long amount of minutes. If you are more advanced and you want to be able to do a side split or a front split with ease then you can get down into a side split or a front split for multiple minutes and that will definitely help you to be more comfortable in this position. It does not help you to get more flexible in that direction you would have to do over splits and stuff like that. What are the best times to stretch? Basically in the morning your body is stiff it won't have a big range of motion compared to the late afternoon or the evening so therefore these last two times are definitely better if you want to have a biggest range of motion. However it is beneficial for you to stretch in the morning if you want to benefit from your increased range of motion in the rest uh, at the rest of the day so if you have time you can stretch in the morning and in the late afternoon or evening or even all three of them if you only do relaxed stretching that is however pnf stretching and isometric stretching are best done later on the day to reduce the chance of getting injured now the final frequently asked question is can stretching and flexibility training reduce muscle soreness? No it cannot. The micro tears that are causing the soreness or the lactic buildup that are causing, causing the soreness cannot be reduced by doing stretching. It may be a relief of a for a short amount of time because your body is more relaxed. However it does not help you to reduce the soreness. 
the topic of bodybuilding, fitness, and strength training combined with flexibility training is pretty controversial. A lot of people who are into weight training, body weight training, think that doing flexibility training is pointless for them and that their muscles are too big, that they are too heavy to do stretching, and that they are just too tight. Well, the size doesn't mean anything to flexibility. As you may know, a lot of sumo wrestlers can also do splits and are very flexible, so don't use that as, as an excuse. Now, flexibility can actually be very beneficial if you are lifting weights or doing bodyweight training because it will increase the range of motion. And as you may know, hypertrophy is also determined by the range of motion that you use, also the intensity that you use and the time under tension. Now, if you are doing curls like this, obviously you don't have to be very flexible for this, but it's easier for, for, for me to show it like this. If you are doing curls and only go halfway, then the range of motion won't be very big. And also that means that it directly influences the time under tension. The time under tension will be less and you will be able to lift heavier weights because you're not going all the way up and all the way down. However, being able to have a big range of motion and a longer time under tension is more important than the direct load for some, for some exercises and some people. So doing full squats is definitely more beneficial for most people than it is if you're doing half squats and flexibility plays a huge role in doing squats and deep squats. So please do not use this as an excuse do not use bodybuilding and weightlifting as an excuse to not do any stretching at all. If you are doing it as part of your workout, like I said before, you shouldn't do it as a warm up, but rather use it as a cool down or just do your flexibility training on separate days or separate moments of a day in order to get the best results possible. And I also mentioned this earlier, Relaxed stretching or static stretching relaxes your body and if you are doing weight training or calisthenics or whatever then it is very bad if you are relaxed because you want to be psyched up all the way and want to be more aggressive rather than relaxed. However, you can do dynamic stretching because the movements will help you to increase your range of motion as well as strengthen your muscles and warm up your muscles a little bit. So doing some arm swings before doing a military press, for example, is definitely good. Let's talk about sports and flexibility. Obviously, every athlete needs some degree of flexibility or at least it will help them to improve their game. So a golf player has, can improve his swing if he's more flexible and martial artists obviously need it for kicks. Also gymnasts need it for basically every movement that they do and for a swimmer the upper body flexibility can greatly improve their strokes. Now it is important to train according to the demands that your sport has. So for example a martial artist need to kick high and that's different from sitting in a split because a split is static, a kick is very dynamic and it's a shorter amount of time that you require flexibility. However it does require a lot of technique. So combine your flexibility training as much as possible with the sport that you are doing and make sure that it's useful and applicable to what you want to achieve. So improve your kicks if you're a martial artist, do some V-sits if you're a gymnast and improve your hip mobility as a football soccer player. Obviously these are just some examples but make sure that it's relevant and that it's effective without wasting any time. The tips that I'm going to give you regarding side split and front split training consists primarily of telling you what muscles are directly involved in doing these exercises but I will also show you some various side split techniques as well as some extra tips that I have for you in order to get to this goal. Now first of all let me show you three different kind of side splits or at least the ones that I know. This is the one that I learned first so with my feet my toes pointing forward in the same direction as my face. Now this can put some stress on your joints and especially if you're 
vulnerable in this area however I never really had any problems with it and this is the first like I said the first kind of split that I learned not everyone agrees that this is a decent split now you can also do it like this lying in front of you and this is better for your knees actually because they're in a more national natural position and it's similar to this one so the side split which is supposed to be like this where your toes are pointing up towards the ceiling now various muscles are involved in these exercises first of all if you're lying down like this or forward then your inner thigh will need to be stretched the most or at least your body depends most on this muscle if it's doing this kind of split. On the other hand, if your toes are pointing upwards, then your hamstrings are doing more work than your inner thigh, although your inner thigh also has to be very flexible, obviously, because it needs to help open your hips. And that's the next muscle group that's involved, the hip flexors, which are very important if you want to learn a side split and also secondarily I think the glutes are doing some work. Now for the front split, which I'm very bad at, your hamstrings need to do a lot of work and I've injured my hamstrings a couple of times, which is why I'm not very good at the front split anymore. Anyways, so the hamstrings, is imp hamstrings are important as well as the hips which you should be supposed to have your hips square. So they should be in the same line of each other. Obviously I cannot do that. However, that doesn't mean that I don't know how to do it. Also your quadriceps are playing a bigger part in a front split than most people think. And also one very important thing is stretching your calves. Especially if you think that your hamstrings are not flexible enough then it's most likely also a, a reason why, or your calves are probably also a reason why you cannot do a front split because these two muscles are kind of in the same direction and if you cannot do a front split because of your hamstring inflexibility then also make sure that you stretch your lower leg. So not only your calves but also your shins. Specific tips for the side split, the first one being that it is important to stretch in different angles. What I mean with that is, and we'll show it from the side, when you're sitting down in a split or at least when you're trying to go down as far as you can, then you may want to lean forward a little bit and you want to lean to, the, to one side and then to the other side and also to the back because this will help you to stretch your muscles in different directions which will eventually lead to a greater range of motion of this particular area of muscles. And the next one is the position of your joints, of your hip joints. When you are trying to slide down from a split into a split then you will eventually notice that you cannot go any further and this is because of anatomical reasons. And the way you have to see this is that your hip, your joints in the hip are basically like this. I don't know how to say this. Just look at the picture, you will get it. Anyways, if you slide your legs outwards immediately then your bones will eventually hit the hip joints and then you would be able to go any further. However, if you tilt your pelvis forward and your butt backwards, then you can more easily slide into a, a split. So that's what you need to do. You will have to exaggerate by putting your butt backwards and your hips forward and then you will be able to do the splits or at least the side splits. So keep that in mind when you're training for the side split. Finally, some more specific tips for the front split. If you are stretching your hamstrings, then you will notice that if you point your toes upwards, there is more tension in your hamstrings. However, if you point them forward, like so, then you won't feel a lot of tension in your hamstrings. Now, this is very useful if you are trying to get into a front split, because if you point your toes forward, or at least this one, then you won't have as much tension on your hamstrings and therefore it will be easier for you to get into a front split. And the second, second tip, like with the side split, you should stretch in different angles. So you could stretch like this, stretch like this, you can stretch forward. Make sure that your muscles are targeted in different angles because your hamstrings 
as I said, like you can hear, it is multiple. There are multiple hamstring muscles and by only stretching them in this area, so in this angle, you won't stretch all the others equally. So that's why a lot of people also fail to do a front split. There are about six main types of stretching and the first and probably most common one is static stretching or relaxed stretching, whatever you want to call it. This basically is where you put your body into position, find the level of tension, which is here for example, and then you wait until the tension fades away. So this is a very simple concept, but it still is very effective, although it may be taking a bit longer for you to become flexible than two of the other types, but more about that later. Anyways, you all have sets of three to five sets of holding it an exercise for 20 to 30 seconds, although I personally have used 10 second sets and that has helped, has helped me to learn a side split. Next up is dynamic stretching of which you can see a couple of clips here. This is a technique to actively stretch your muscles by using a movement. However, you won't kick as high as you can because this can lead to injuries. Instead, you will kick as high as possible without having a high amount of tension. So you may feel some tension, but after doing a few leg swings or swinging your arms a couple of times, this tension should be coming less. Kind of similar to dynamic stretching is ballistic stretching, which is in fact stretching more rigorously, which is also going to increase your risk of getting injured. This is only for the professional athletes under good supervision, however, I still think that it doesn't have a lot of benefits to use this type of stretching. It can really increase your chance of getting injured and it's also not very comfortable. Basically, it's bouncing and jumping into different kind of stretches which is very bad for your body because it cannot respond properly and as you can imagine it also doesn't give the Golgi tendon organs any chance of overriding the muscle spindles and therefore you won't become as flexible as with more controlled techniques. Now isometric stretching is a different kind of stretching technique which is actually more advanced. So let's say that this is my maximum range of motion in the side split. It's easiest to show it with this exercise. Now what I do in this position I will contract all my muscles in my legs especially if you can target an individual muscle then please do so so if I can stretch more or flex my hamstrings only then I will do so however it's easier just to stretch to flex your entire lower body man I cannot talk anyways that's what you do for about 10 to 20 seconds and most of the time I use 10 seconds and then you will relax so what you do in with this technique is you will strengthen the muscle in a particular range of motion and therefore it will help you to become more strong to become stronger in this particular position and also as you may know flexibility and strength go hand in hand together and especially if your muscles are not strong enough they can also not reach their maximum range of motion and the other way around so make sure that you also train your muscles properly like I said, isometric training is more advanced, so for those who are not ready to do it for this yet, I recommend you to do some strength training besides doing your static stretching. One step further is isometric PNF training or PNF training, which stands for proprioceptive neuromuscular facilitation. Basically, what it does is you will go down, get down into a stretching position, any stretching position. I'm doing a side split now then you will contract your muscles like you did with isometric training and this is my maximum range of motion right now as an example after contracting my muscles for about 10 seconds so after the isometric stretching I will let myself lower a little bit until I find a new range of motion so basically it combines static stretching the basics of static stretching where you wait until the tension goes away with isometric stretching so you will find a new range of motion a higher range of motion after contracting your muscles the final technique is called myofascial release this is kind of a massage technique I think and normally you will do it with a foam roller so a kind of beam that is 
specially designed to stretch and massage your muscles. However, you can also do it with, for example, a tennis ball. And what you do is you will put it on the floor, show it like this, and then you will simply roll it in the length of your muscles and you will have to put some pressure on it in order to make it work. Obviously it's easier with a foam roller, however I don't have one and also don't really like this technique myself, but it does definitely help you to get a greater range of motion. What you will do is you will kind of press against the muscle and wait until the tension goes away and then you can roll down a little bit further and so on and so forth. It is time to show you an exercise guide for what kind of exercises you can do for particular muscles and muscle groups. Obviously these are not all, it's not a complete guide because there are hundreds and hundreds of exercises that you can do for your flexibility. However, I can only show so many so I decided to just show a couple of basic ones and the ones that I often use. And if you are interested in seeing how to build a particular flexibility routine about this, then check out the description in which I have a link, a couple of links of recommended videos for complete flexibility routines, including the five and 10 minute flexibility beginners, intermediate and advanced workout plans. So let's get started with the exercises. Enjoy.
Now for the trapezius muscle, which is this part and goes down all the way to the middle of your back, you will do an exercise which involves putting your head to one side and then you will grab the opposed hand. I will show it in a minute from a close up so you know what I mean, but it's a very basic exercise and it definitely works very well. You can pull your arm down further and you will, can put your head further to the side and this will increase the stretch. The next exercise is for your chest muscles. It works best if you have just worked out your chest or at least if you feel tension in your chest because then the tension can guide you to how far you can stretch to make the exercise helpful. Now, basically you could use a doorway one of my favorite stretching exercises for the upper body is this one. It's for the latissimus dorsi, so for one of the upper back muscles. Basically what you will do is you will grab a bar and it doesn't have to be close to the wall. Basically you will hang a little bit to the side once you have grabbed the bar. And this will put a lot of tension on your chest, or not on your chest, on your upper back. And when you do this, then you will eventually fade away the tension. And if this happens, then try to get a new level of tension so that you can actually increase your flexibility. You can also do this in the air and bend like this. However, this is more for beginners, so definitely a good exercise if you are, have just started working out your upper body flexibility. So we've done the major muscle groups in your upper body, now let's go to the smaller ones. First off, the triceps. You'll place one arm in the air, then bend your arm and place your hand on your scapula. Then pull down with the other arm until you feel enough tension. And once this tension goes down, which, is, which should be the case, then you can pull a little bit further. So make sure that you don't feel any pain during these stretching exercises. Get yourself a chair or something like that. Place both hands on the backrest and make yourself as long as possible as if you're going to dive into the water. Then put your head in between your arms and go down as far as you can. And this will stretch your entire shoulder or at least most of it. And also it can put some tension on your upper back. So this means that it also stretches the upper back a little bit. The back of your shoulders is stretched as follows. You'll bring the arm that you want to stretch in front of you. Then with the other arm, you will pull it backwards a little bit. And further you place the arm towards your hand, this hand, the more stress or the more stretching that you will get out of this exercise. Well, I guess that's all for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and definitely watch it again if you want to learn more and more about flexibility training. Check out my blog and my website if you want to learn more about this and check out my web shop if you are interested in my workout plans and my ebook about how to get six pack abs. I thank you very much for watching this video and I will see you next time.